Hello everybody. Welcome to our Friday night, fabulous Friday night session called Let's Go Fly a Kite. So you might be wondering why I'm calling it that and it's because our um, subject tonight is from the mini catalogue and it's called the Kite Delight Stamp Set. Now you can find this on page 31. Hi Glenda, lovely to see you. And oh, and another Glenda's there too. Oh, lovely to see you both. Okay. How's your holiday, Glenda L? Is that going well? Oh, sorry, Glenda S. Yes, and you are here. And Glenda L, I hope you haven't been rained out too much. I know you've got some big storms up your way recently. So, I'll just wait for a couple more people. And I'm glad you're here, Glenda S. Yeah. It's, um, it's a bit humid in Brisbane, but that could just be me. <laughs> yeah. So, we're all about this kite stamp set. So, I'm just going to wait for a second or two until other people come on. And oh, it's a great holiday and it's good weather. Oh, that's great. I'll give me one second. We um, are a bit disorganised in our house tonight and we're having to, had takeaway for tea, but it took longer to arrive than... We planned, so I was scoffing it down <clears throat> at a minute to seven. So just give me one second. Okay, sorry about that. Hi, Jody. Oh, yeah, Glenda L, you finally got some rain. That's fabulous. I hope it wasn't too heavy, though. Yeah. And Jody, yay, you're here too. Yes, your comments are showing up. Ah, oh, and you don't have any humidity there, Glenda. <sighs> Yes, Jody, your comments are here. So I'm writing all three of your names down for our lucky draw. So we've got Glenda L, Glenda S, and Jody. And as other people join in, we will um, add them too. Okay, so when you look at the mini catalogue on page 31 and you see this Kite Delight sta um, stamp set and you go, I don't know about you, but I went, well, how am I going to use that? So it's, um, oh, you've got perfect weather there. Oh, goodness. So, yes, um, I don't know if anyone else thought that and thought, no, it's not for me. Well, because of the price, because it's only $32, I decided that I would challenge myself and come up with at least five ways to use it. And I'm going to show you three of those ways tonight. Might demonstrate them and I'll, they're fairly quick. So, yeah, you thought nope on that set, Jody. Yeah, I initially did. Um, and if you watched the um, stamp along, 
the other week. That's the card I made with it. So that's my gift card holder. But like that's pretty ordinary, really. So I thought, oh, well, I'll try something else. And so I made another, it's not a gift card holder, but it's a similar layout. So I made that one. But they're not the ones that I want to show you. So let's start with our um, first one. I'm just going to grab my Stamparatus. As I said, our house is in disarray. Okay. So this is my Stamparatus. I've got my Deluxe Foam Mat. Oh, you like the cards? Well, thank you. Um, and I have got a little um, piece of grid paper. And I use mine upside down because I just find it easier. So the first stamp I'm going to use tonight is our... Actually, I do use it upside down, but then I also use it the other way. So I'm doing it this way. We're going to use these little stars. And I've got, I'm teaming it with another stamp set, which I'll be honest, I haven't used this stamp set yet. Good evening, Judy. Lovely to see you. I'll add your name into the lucky drawer as well. Okay. All right, so we're talking about the um, Kite Delight stamp set. And we've already established that most people went, uh, no, that's not for me. So we're gonna use our Stamparatus for our first card. I'm going to show you some different ways to use it that might change your mind. So I'm pressing down on my thing and so I've got and I've got some bits that I've already pre-cut from the birthday chick. So I've got a piece of white, um, my card base and the inside of my card and a piece of granny apple green the card base is magenta madness i'm using up that like crazy because it's retiring next month and we're going to do our stamping first i've also got some little bits and pieces that i have colored and die cut from the hey birthday chick set that goes with the kite delight set okay so, can anyone guess what sort of occasion our card might be for? Anyone? Anyone? I sound like from, from Ferris Bueller's day off, really. Um, let's double check I've got that in the right spot. An Easter card? Mm. No. No, not a new baby card. Oh. Let's just have another look at the Hey Birthday Chick stamp set and see what you think. Yeah, so. Judy, do you have a guess? A hen's party, no. New home, no. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, I guess you're going to have to wait and see. All right. So, I've got these little stars. Now, these would normally be the tail of your kite. 
these are like I'm using them like decorations so and again Jody I am winging it an old friend's birthday well that's pretty close a friend a birthday is all you had to say yeah no it wasn't retirement no it's definitely Glenda it's a birthday so I've just inked up one lot of stars I'm going to lift my stamparatus and move it down a bit I love it when I wing it I seem to wing it a bit don't I <laughs> So these are like decorations hanging from the ceiling. You know how like, you see at the parties there are backdrops and move it down another one. These are a bit random. It's a bit closer than I wanted. I'm just going to put We'll do five across. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. This is the one thing I love about the Stamparatus is that um, you can do this hinge stamping. You can't do that with a Misty or a um, Tim Holtz thing. And I've missed one, so I've got four. I'm going to do a fifth one. So, these are like our stars in the background. You know when you have a photo booth or something like that, there are stars. And so this looked really good in my head, let me just say this. <laughs> Alright. So, normally I would use... Um, stamping blends but I'm just going to use my stamping right markers this is from the bright set and this is a melon mambo and I'm just going to color in each of my star um, the stars I'm um, not coloring in all of them in melon mambo so I'm just trying to be nice and quick it is a bit like fairy lights, journey. Yeah, and and I'm really hoping this works out how it looked in my head because it looked really good in my head. Anyway, if it doesn't work out, you'll get the idea anyway. So I've also got, this one is a bumblebee, and I actually meant to get Daffodil Delight, but we'll, um, this is from the, re the ink colours that are retiring um, next, uh, in May, but they, once the retiring list comes out, I would be getting them, so there's a pack of five pens in the set so the bumblebee is a little bit dull really there's no mistakes in card making yeah well my really good friend who introduced me to card making she was my boss at work she um was telling me about the amish quilts and i love this story it's just the best story so the Amish, when they make their quilts, they always have a mistake in it. So no Amish quilt is ever perfect. So um, that means that most of us wouldn't pick up where the mistake is. And when we were in um, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, um, a couple of years ago, we went to this beautiful place um, where they sell the quilts and 
like even the quilted bowl things that they you know how you have a bowl to use um like a oh maybe i should show you Hang on. no i don't know where it is anyway they have these holders for bowls so when you have your soup sitting on the couch you can um yeah it's sort of like a an oven mitt for a bowl really and it shapes around them and so I asked the lady well is it true about and she goes well yes it's true and well, the reason they do it is because God doesn't make anyone perfect and um so they can't make a perfect quilt so it's a really beautiful story and so we bought a few things from the Amish and it was lovely. But it was so cool. You'd be driving down the road and seeing a um, horse and cart and, um, yeah, it was so fabulous. But they have really um, strange names for places and, um, yes, they're... They're sort of some of the places have really suggestive names and you go oh, okay that's interesting so I'm just sticking my layers on so I put my green uh, granny apple green layer on the front it is really lovely it's a lovely place it was a bit cold when we were there in oh, the end of autumn because so apparently Steve and I are what they what the Americans in the northern states call leaf people so all these people go around and look at the trees in the fall and they call and the locals all call them leaf people so apparently we're the, those sort of people as well Okay, so I'm just sticking my bit on the inside of the card as well. Now, that piece that I stamped is the only bit of stamping I'm doing on the front of the card because I've already stamped a few bits and pieces before. So, has everybody got a drink on this Friday night? I'm drinking water, but what are you, what is everybody else drinking? I hope somebody's having a nice glass of wine or a cocktail. Hello, Kim. Oh, you were watching the football. Ah. Oh. Yes, yeah, well. Well, all I'm up to is I've just stamped these little stars using this stamp here from the Kite Delights tip. And I use my Stamparatus to get them all lined up. So I'm teaming my Stamparatus, but my Kite Delight with the Hello Birthday Chick and I've already stuffed it up. So hang on one second before I take, before that sticks down too hard. We're going to wrap some ribbon round. Goodness me. See, I was too busy telling the story. Yeah, well, it's a good stamp set, Kim. I'm surprised how many ideas that I came up with. So, when I buy a stamp set, I have to come have... Oh, you're just having cold water, Jodie. Oh. I need some ice in my water, I think. I was telling someone the other day that I get hot flushes every time I do a Facebook Live. I don't get them any other time, so I think it might just be anxiety. <laughs> or wanting to make sure that I get everything right. So, I've stuck my ribbon on. Probably need some glue dots behind that. Yeah, we'll just see. Ah, 
You're drinking the free wine. Well, Glenda's drinking, um, sorry, Glenda's drinking the cold water. Oh, you need to concentrate, kid. You don't want to watch the, I'm more important than the football. It was an interesting story. I'm really good at telling stories. I think that um, we, I spend half my life telling people stories. And my um, one of our tradesmen, he, he's been working here on our reno, is he's a storyteller too. So we have to be really conscious not to tell stories, and he has to he has to work because I want my bathrooms finished. I think about a week and a half to go. I think all going well. Okay, so I've got my ribbon. So my ribbon is the glittery white ribbon and i have colored it with a magenta madness um yes judy they are interesting i've always been a storyteller kim so i'm gonna ignore that comment about i'm getting old although i'm told that now i'm 50 it's all downhill from here so yeah that's great but I'm still the youngest in my group, so, um, well, of our main, our core tribe, so I'm happy with that. Yeah. So, I've got these other die cut bits, and oh, I've got stuck to my paper, hang on. Shiraz Jody. Oh, yum. I like it when they don't put all the the nasty sulfur sulfur things in it. Okay, so I've got my little chicken with a cupcake that I have um, coloured in with my stamping blends. I didn't hear read that. You like to cut the die three times and glue them together. Oh, well, I um, didn't cut it three times. I just put it on the stamping up foam that you can die cut. All right. And then it's a happy birthday. So this is with the glimmer paper out of the annual catalogue. Oh. So I'm just popping that happy birthday. I might pop it up. No, I'll pop it down here. Okay. Keep my ribbon in place. I've also cut like little streamers. So it's a birthday party. So one is cut with the... Um, and these are cut also from the... Glimmer paper that's sort of a it's such a pretty paper and I've got my little chicken in the egg I think it's so cute and so let me talk about what colors I used I use lots of colors um, so the fuzzy haired fuzzy feathered chicken has got pumpkin pie and a light pumpkin pie for his legs. His body is a um, crumb cake. And then we've got melon mambo on his feathers and pumpkin pie on his darker feathers. It's, this cake top is a combination of the polished pink and the magenta madness together. So I did um, a layer of polished pink and then I blended some magenta madness and we've got granny apple green magenta madness um, Bermuda Bay and then the little chick is um, also the egg is um, 
grey granite and then again the um, mango melody that's what it is and also the granny apple green and the Bermuda Bay and the, the magenta okay so that's part of the front and I'll need to find a um, let's move that along I haven't stuck it down properly move it along a little bit because I'm going to put my ribbon on here Not going to move without ripping the paper, so I'm just going to grab my glue dots. <clears throat> but before I do that, I will grab my little pieces or other pieces that I I should have put some adhesive backing on these. Yeah. The stars could be for Christmas, so it was just uh, to get you thinking about this set, thinking, okay, well, it might be good, might be better value for money than what I thought it was. Um, so I've got three projects to demonstrate, so I'm hurrying, but I have been prepared. I'm going to pop this one up here. Tuck that under there. And tuck this one in up under there as well. So let me grab my glue dot. Playing in the football. I don't even know who's playing. Poor Steve had to turn the TV off because, um, well, had to turn the volume on to silent because you can hear it in video if, if I, um, if he has it on while I'm trying to do this. So, just pop this there. And I don't mind that my tail goes off the edge of my card, but because it does go off the edge, I'm going to put some extra strength behind it because I love the glue dots. So make sure that you're commenting heaps of times on different posts that come up over the next two days or till Sunday. And... Um, yeah, well, we can um, put you in the prize draw. And I need to show you what that is. So, this is the, I don't know if you can see it. This is the essentials kit. So, it's got big dimensionals, little dimensionals, seal, sponge, glue dots. Bone folders, chalk markers, um, Winker Stella, tear and tape. Um, so it's got quite a lot of things in this lucky draw. So, and that's just, that's a major prize just for being participating now we want to do the inside of our card and I have well I did have three three little chicks oh one stuck to my hand and these are so cute and these are also cut out with the dies from the um, same um, hey birthday chick I have to show you they have have some really cute little dies and I don't believe that I hadn't used this at all. So it's got fences and grass I think 
and little feed bags and bow ties. So it's in the annual catalogue, but it's still a great little set if you um, don't have it. So, and it goes well with our um, little chickens, uh, little kite set. Oh goodness, it's been a long day. Yeah. Yesterday, Kim and I were up early and we were on a video conference with the States at 5am. And so it doesn't help when you don't go to bed until midnight. So, yeah, because we're in a, a crafting group and it's really lots of fun. Yeah, and we did a craft along, so... Yeah, that was a long day. Yeah. So, oh, I'm glad Lynn likes the way I've done this, the streamers. Hello, Lynn. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm pretty happy with that. And see, it worked out exactly how I thought it would work in my head. So, okay. Let's have a look at... The next, um, oh, thank you, Judy, and thank you, Jody. That it is a really, oh, the Broncos are, and rabbits are playing football. Oh. When you said football, I was thinking soccer, but yes. <laughs> okay, so let's have a look at what else we've got in this set. So let's, well, what about this kite? This is the one we're going to... Oh, hello, Mel! Let's put your name down here too. Oh. Nice to see you. Yeah. Okay, so we've got this kite here. And a lot of people would struggle with this kite. Like I've used it on this card here. And so that basically that's wine embossed, heat embossed, and then on pool party. And then I've colored the bits with um, markers. But yeah, it's not my favorite. But let's pop this away. I'll just put the switch over my paper. Oops. So I love this stamper artist thing. So this stamp set is probably, or this stamp is probably the most underrated stamp in the whole set. So what I'm doing is I'm putting it on my, I don't know if you can see this. I've drawn like a little square and I am putting, I've measured how big this kite is. And I think it was about one and a quarter, no, 1.75 inches. Okay. And I've got some fresh freesia, fresh freesia, freesia. I don't know what it's called. Um, and I have got a piece of white. Now I've already stamped my elements that I'm putting on this. So I'm putting this flower from the art gallery stamp set with it. And you're probably thinking, how on earth is that going to work? So I need to tell you one thing about the art gallery set. It is, um, the bundle has been re-released. So it's got dyes and at 20% off. Yes, you could make it into an umbrella. And I'm glad you've said that. Because that's what I did on this card. So I've just stamped it three times. And I've cut it. Fussy cut one edge and I've cut it with the oval or a circle 
Yeah, it could be a bird or so yeah so that's my parasol right, i really like that one but good cool pick up there glenda yeah and yes all right so lots of people don't see that so i'm glad that you're all thinking that way so i've got my little piece of white Oops to the paper. I don't actually hate that when it's humid. Now I'm making sure that I've got it in the corner. So it is square. Just use one of my magnets. I've also got some my, my layers and I'll show you the rest of the stuff for the card in a second. So I've got my art gallery stamp. So for this month, you can get the art gallery bundle if you haven't already got it. And it is um, a great bundle. And I've actually got a PDF class if anyone is interested in that. And it contains all the elements all cut up for, I'm just not sure how many cards. It's been so long since I did it. Hmm. Thank you, Kim. I'm glad you love that card. But I haven't got this on quite straight. So I'm just going to have to... Now, the thing is that it's not a perfect right angle triangle, which really bugs me. <laughs> hmm, so pretty straight now so if it was it would be so much easier if it was a perfect right angle so I'm just going to ink it up in the fresh freezer Actually, I haven't even put the labels on that that's how much I use that stamp set hardly at all so I'm pressing it down in one corner so if you just did one, that could be like a little spider web if you did it in black. Oh, I'm just going to move that down just a little bit. Now I've turned it round, so I've rotated it. And I'll put my, that's right, straight. it nice and firmly now the other thing I really love about this stamper artist and I did it again so I have to move it around again so I'm rotating it just make it underneath the lines it's not an exact science well I don't think it is oh. Delphi's got one of those food toys and she's decided that right now is a great way, time to rattle it and get the food out. It's one of those Kong toy things. She's just such a helpful dog. I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but it always sounds really loud. And she's one of these puppies that if you're on the phone to your, your mum, she comes with a squeaky toy and stands there and squeaks it the whole time that you're on the phone. And she doesn't tire of it. So. Okay. So this is a bit like maybe a Mandela sort of a thing. So we've done the corners. I'll move my Stamparatus out of the way. I'll stick my other stamp on it, on the Stamper Artist that I haven't used yet. So, I have got my base card, which is a fresh freezer. So, it started off as five and three quarters by eight. Um, 
inches. Then I have got a piece of the same colour that I've embossed, and I've embossed that with one of the ornate floral things. Well, I think it's lovely as it is, huh? So, I'm just going to stick this on, use a bit of glue, and use the other end of the glue. Yeah. So, Mel, are you still watching and how are you? I forgot to ask how you are. Hope you're well. And I hope you're taking some, um, lots of beautiful photos. Okay. So, we've got our flowery pattern. So... I cut that. That's the wrong one. This is the one I just did. So I've made this um, an eighth of an inch smaller than my card. So you can adjust the card to however you want. I think mine was three and a quarter inches by three and a quarter inches. Around about there. So, and I will show you another way that you can do it. Goodness. It's a lovely embossing folder. You like the way the card's shaping up? Oh, thank you, Judy. It's getting there. We're nearly there. So I haven't done, I've only shown you the stamping for the, um, with the kite elements. I'm not showing you all the other stamping because most people know how to stamp. And that is a lovely embossing folder. You haven't got this? Oh, yes, my nails do match. They're, that wasn't planned, Kim, <laughs> trust me. They're um, almost on the... I've got to go get them re... Um, polished because I can't do my own nail polish and ordinary nail polish just comes off so I'm just going to pop that there now we could turn it around I have I didn't bring a piece of white to put on the inside let's put it let's just put it this way We'll make it a landscape card. I've got my lots of little glue dots and mini glue, no, dim dimensionals and mini dimensionals on here. Kim, I would wait until you see what the retiring list is before you decide to get this stamp set. Um, just because um, that'll come out before the end of the month. And I'm not trying to talk you out of it. And anyone that um, buys the art gallery stamp set from me this over this weekend, they will get um, an art gallery class from me. So, yes. And I've also in the art gallery set is this little piece here. And I've stamped a happy birthday. So it's coming together. Where is my. Oh, you were thinking that too, Kim, that you should wait. I think it's a good idea. And it's always, like, I have had, at the beginning of the week, I had 21 um, stamp sets that I hadn't yet used. So I've been frantically <laughs> using them um, 
because I think, oh, I don't want to not have used them. I don't know if you can see what I've done there. So I've just layered that happy birthday onto some fresh freesia. Oh, that's going to be too big. I'll pop it. Yeah, I will put another dimensional underneath it shortly. All right, so I've got some ribbon and I think it does need ribbon and it does need bling. So these are the in color rhinestones from the annual catalog. And Use my take the pick tool. Just pop a couple of just about three rhinestones around. So has everybody got big weekends planned? I'm sure they have. I'm going to pop this one over here. So you'll see when I've put my rhinestones on, I've put them in like a, a triangle pattern. Just because that seems to be a bit pleasing to the eye. Now I don't have my bow maker over here. So this will be interesting, me making a bow without my bow maker. Let's see if I can manage to do this. I had a fibromyalgia flare up this morning and I, my hands weren't working properly. So I think I'm doing pretty well. Oh, look. So when I want to tension the bow, I'll just hold on to the knot. It's, it's sort of okay. Scissors. One moment. <sighs> what sort of Silly person comes to the table without bringing their scissors. Gee. Not my favourite bow, but it's pretty okay. Use our glue dots. Still struggling with the fact that I put the glue dots on the other side now. Mm. Now I might not be able to see your comments in a minute because I've got them on my iPad and my iPad's saying to me, low battery, low battery. Yes, so there we go. So that's our card. So you can see how I've used that. And so then I've also used it on this one. But when you open it up, I've made it like a, almost like a Mandela. So that's how I would use that one. The other way that I would use it is to make a spider web. And so I basically stamped one, two, three, and had to mask a little bit. Now this is made with the ladybird punch and a circle punch for the head to make it nice and um, yes and it says you can bug me anytime and these trees are from the inspired thoughts bundle. Oh, I can't see but I really love the spider card I just think that's really fun but I love all of them. So, yeah, so there are 
four different ways, or five different ways, you can use that one stamp. One, one, two, three, four, five. So it starts to become a bit more attractive when you can find different ways to use it. Okay, so we're on to our last project. I'll just move these things out of the way. Um, and this one's probably the most tricky one. Well, I found it the most tricky. And I'm hoping I don't stuff it up. So, we're going to use this stamp here. For some reason, my thing all turned around. I don't know why I've gone sideways. I'm really sorry. Um, for some reason it's gone wonky and I don't know what's happening. But anyway, um, we'll keep persevering. I don't know why it's doing that. I'm sorry about that. Okay, for some reason it's just... I must detach the wrong thing. You like the umbrella too? Yeah, I do love the umbrella. Okay, so what we're going to use, and we're going to use an old tool. Some of you will have it, some of you may not. And it's the old-fashioned stamp a jig So basically, if you don't have one of these, what I would do is I would get two pieces of timber or a set square and a piece of acetate. You can do the same thing. Okay, so we're going to use our stamp a jig We've got, um, and we're going to use this to make a background. I'm just going to wash my stamp. Because sometimes the stamps, when they're round embossing powder, they get a bit... Um, yeah, you like the umbrella too, Judy. Thank you. And Kim, you've still got your stamper, stamper majig. You can do this with the stamperatus, but the thing that I found with the stamperatus was that the stamp is, isn't exactly the right size. What I've done is I've just got my stamp and I've put it on my clear block and I'm going to use one of the ink colors that I absolutely do not like and it is Pacific Point and I don't like Pacific Point because I um, I know you keep everything Kim <laughs> um, because I always get it all over my hands and I've got a piece of I don't know, I don't have a piece of scrap. So, what you can do is you can do something like this, which is a um, just a repeat pattern, and I've just done them end to end and then done these in between. Or you can do something a bit more tricky and um, have them like this. So what you need to do, and I've just got one square um, free. I don't know where my paper is. I'm going to demonstrate on a small scrap and then you can see what I mean. Oh, Night of Navy. Any of Night of Navy is one of those colours for me too. So some people use a Stamparatus or Stampamajig. So what you do is you get your acetate sheet and you stick it into the corner. All right. 
So if you are left-handed, you might want to have this on this side. It just depends. I do it upside down because everyone else tells me you're supposed to do it that way, but I like doing it this way, but it doesn't matter. So you just have your acetate and you've pushed it right into that corner. So if you've got a, um, a right angled two pieces of wood together, I think they call it a set square, and you're just going to stamp onto the acetate. So then what you do is you get your piece of paper and you work out where you want to stamp. So I want that one to stamp off the edge. Right. And what's really useful when you're doing this is putting a bit of masking tape on the back of it so it doesn't move on the back of your cardstock. It's my little tip for the day. Um, so what I'm going to do is when I stamped on this, I have pushed the block right into the corner. Okay, so I've got this here and I've lined it up with the edge. Got my stamp in my jig, pushed it right in so it's flush, that piece of acetate is flush in the corner. So I know exactly where I'm gonna line that up. And I should have had a piece of paper underneath this. But it's all right. So that's the first one. Then I'm just going to move my thing down. And I don't know if you can see this because I have no clue what my iPhone is doing. And this is a good refresher for you, Kim, on how to use it. I just think it's a great underutilized tool. Sometimes the stamps are the wrong size for the stamparatus to make it easy. Like I tried a whole heap of ways and it just overlapped. So I've done it again. So now if I wanted to do it the other way, I could just turn it around. All right, I'm gonna line this up. In there and you just build your pattern like that and I'm not going to bore you to tears building my pattern and you can pretty much get it and what some people do is they'll do it stamp their color on their acetate a different color and I think I've got that in the right spot that's pretty good so see how that starts to build right so I've got one that I did earlier, and I've only got one square left to do. So I'm going to grab my piece here, and you're probably thinking, oh, that looks dreadful, Chrissy. Yeah, it sort of does, but trust me, I'm a professional. <laughs> there we go. That's funny, isn't it? Pop this on here, and look. Voila, it's done. Grab my chamois and just wipe that off there. So, I'll just wipe the glue off this as well. I'll run these under the tap when I've finished. this make sure that I have none of it on my fingers see it just stays on there all right I managed to get it everywhere okay so then let's get started making this card so I have got a piece of thick white and it's a um, Called portrait top opening bottom opening card. I've got my little background piece. I've also got another piece of blue, which I've well, this is a textured piece. Oh, that's how long I've had that piece of Pacific Point. We haven't had textured cardstock for a very, very long time. 
So it's look, it looks like it's got the subtles or the linen. Um, anyway, that's funny. <sighs> well, <laughs> so, and I haven't got the measurements for these. I should have used my base thing that had um, the numbers on it, shouldn't I? Okay. So we're not doing anything too exciting with it. Here. Now I want my, so you can use any sort of size that you like. I think mine's about two inches. If you wanted to use a pattern paper instead of a stamped bit, but we're doing a stamped bit because it's all about showing this kite set. Um, now, don't freak out, I haven't finished stamping yet. We love, we love it when someone says, trust me. Oh, I'm glad you love it when someone says that. I'm a professional. Yeah. Well, it is my job. So, I've popped this over. So, Okay, now we've got our other little piece. So I was going to emboss this bit, but because it's a te already textured and I've had it for so long, it doesn't need to be um, embossed. But if I were going to emboss it, I would have used the splatters or um, checks, whichever, from the mini catalogue. So I've got my piece here. Grab my scratch paper. I grab this kite that we used before. Now I am not teaming it with something else this time. So you can create, create whatever patterns you sort of like with that. I made it quite a busy pattern. Um, I'm going to stamp this in this kite in blue. I'll get it all over myself yet again. I had it on my face earlier today, and one of the tradesmen came and he just laughed because I had ink on my face. But yes. Before I stamp the kite, I'm going to stamp a sun and I'm stamping it in Mango Melody. So I've got my little sun. I'll pop that up in the corner. Because then I know then where I can stamp my kite. My kite here. Oh, people are still selling these on Marketplace, Kim. Oh. I'm going to put my kite there. Okay. another block here so I want to put my kite tails on as well now it's going to go off the paper and it is going to be in blue so I'm hoping I could have used my stamparatus to line that up but it's pretty good easy to eyeball that one 
okay last thing i want to add to this stamp uh, this little bit on the front is some clouds and so i'm going to grab my pacific point and i'm inking up my i, if you, I don't know where i am i can't see myself see what i'm doing here I think it's all changed. I'm just going to stamp it off twice and put a cloud down here. Now I should have my foam mat underneath these, but it's stamping okay. I'm going to stamp this one off twice and put it there and then I will just stamp this one off once now when you get ink on the inside of your stamp like that it means that there's often an air bubble so you might need to burp your stamp so basically you're just going to lift it up and push it back down again and clean off that bit in the centre now So it sometimes happens with cling stamps, sometimes happens with rubber stamps. So you just need to burp your stamp, like you would burp a little baby. So I've inked it up, stamping it off once, and then I'm just gonna pop it up here. Okay, so I've got my three clouds, I've got my sun. I'm gonna add a little bit of color to my sun. So I've got my bumblebee marker that I had before. I'm gonna, oh, that's quite dark, isn't it? I didn't mean to do that. Let's just fix it with some. What I might have to do is um, get a stamp another sun on a piece of scrap. But that's okay going to colour in our sun. I stuffed it up. So before I photograph it, I'll stamp another one on a piece of scrap and lay it over the top. Just a circle bit. Okay. And I'm going to put a bit of colour on here. I don't know if you can see. And a little bit of colour on the kite body as well. So it's just really quick colouring, nothing too technical. Okay, so there's my kite, all coloured. I'm not going to stamp a sentiment on the back front. What I will do is pop it on dimensionals. Now, if you wanted to add bling to this, you could. I have got some bling to add. Red would look good with it, yeah. Bumblebee, what makes you think bright and sunny, but it's not. No, it's not, Kim. Oh, oh yes. Sorry about Delphi barking at the possum. We've got a possum super highway along our front fence. So, yes, I'm just going to pop this card on here. 
Yeah, some dimensionals. I've got some of these um, playing with patterns dots. And I'm just going to add those on. I'd have to re-fill my... Um, So I'm just going to put three of those on because you can't really have a card without bling. Oh, I could have used those on the um, Fresh Fraser card. Fresh Freesia card. I don't know how you say it. Uh, they have to tell me, is it option A, which is Fraser, or is it option B, which is Freesia? I have no clue whatsoever. And I'll pop that one down here somewhere. Here we go. So that's that little cart. If you wanted to, you could step it up, which is what I've done here. So I've taken that same pattern. I've colored it in with some balmy blue so every diagonal square, instead of just layering it flat, I've cut it out, stamped it, cut it out, raised it up, done some white heat embossing. I've even fussy cut the tail. And this is a um, inked bark um, embossing folder. So you can see that pattern when you add some color to it it doesn't look like a kite okay it's freesia okay Frasier is a tv show yes i know oh you think they're super cute thank you glenda i really hope that you've enjoyed these cards so i'll quickly show them to you again so we'll start well we've got this one here so we've got the background. So I think using that as a back, I, th I like a coloured background better, but I thought it was good to show you. And like you could colour this in, like you don't have to have them all up against each other. And if you're not confident, just having the ends touching and then turning it around and doing these is, is much easier. I'm glad you like the, my ideas and this is probably the card of the night. I really like this one, but I do love the happy birthday and the spider web and the umbrella and I could start singing like Rihanna uh, and this one's that Mandela type thing and then the original two that I did. So there you go. There are our little cards. I'll post, take photos of them and post them in the comments of this Facebook Live. And let's do a little prize draw. Just gonna, before we finish. So we've got Kim. Just writing it, putting it all in our little little cart here. So we've got Kim, we've got Glenda L, we've got Glenda S. We've got Jody. We've got Judy. Mel. 
Okay, so let's do a little twirl around. Okay, I can't see who's got what. Let's go here. And we've got one for Mel. So, Mel is going to get a prize. I will have to talk to her because she's not a big crafter. So, I might just give her some cards, handmade cards. And I will see everybody tomorrow, hopefully, for our classroom. So, thanks so much for joining us. And... See you tomorrow. Bye for now.